Today is about Ermi's Gasparini, the Italian stallion pasta power only quality top rolling gladiator. Ermi's is one of my favorite arm wrestlers to watch as he has incredible technique for someone of his size. Ermi's is a big boy and nearly 300 pounds, but he used to look like this? How did that happen? Let's find out. Even at a very young age, Ermi's super high IQ became very apparent because people with a low IQ would tell Ermi's to hook. But Ermi's would always say, The top role is for the smart people. <laughs> In this paid off big time. Ermi started crushing people who were way bigger than he was. During the rise of his career, half the time he looked like someone who didn't even lift, and then he would walk right through people twice his size. Ermi's defeated Dmitry Trubin while looking like a middle schooler. He destroyed Krasimir Kostadinov, and in 2017, he pinned Monster Michael Todd while being the way smaller guy. Ermi's Gasparini was the pound for pound king, but he wanted more. Ermi started getting bigger and in 2019, he got a shot on the biggest stage in the world. Ermi's was about to show the whole world how strong he truly was. But then, he lost. This was not supposed to happen. Ermi's had crushed people way better than that mask. He beat Trubin, he pinned Michael Todd. What was going on? I think a big problem for Ermi's was the WAL setup. Ermi's just couldn't get any kind of purchase in the match. He looked totally confused during the setup. He was like, what are you, are you doing? Ermi's felt cheated and embarrassed, but this loss against Matt Mask was the best thing that ever happened to Ermi's. Ermi's went on a rampage. He gained 50 pounds after this match, and this wasn't just any 50 pounds, it was 50 pounds of only quality. Ermi's started training, eating, and grating Parmesan like never before. Ermi's was gaining size quickly and was desperate for revenge. He finally got a match against Matt Mask in 2020. 21 and he absolutely destroyed Matt. Now he did lose a round during this match, but we're gonna blame the buckle on that one. This is great, Ermi's is finally back. Now he's never gonna lose again. Dad gummit. It started to become clear that Ermi's had a weakness against long arm top rollers. Ermi's was already way bigger and way stronger than before, but he needed to address this problem. Ermi's wrist flexion was getting exposed. But first, he would pull Gennady Kvigvenia at King of the Table. This match was in December of 2021, and during this match, Ermi's got a chance to put his full power on display and he did exactly that. Finally, Ermi's was pulling someone who had a similar arm length as he did. This meant that the weakness in Ermi's wrist flexion was nowhere near as much of an issue as it was against people who are 14 feet tall. Awesome match from Ermi's, but Ermi's still had work to do. He certainly had not forgotten about losing to Alex Gerdecha so badly. Ermi's wrist needed to be way, way stronger. So Ermi started going super hard on cupping exercises. Ermi's told us at a later time that his very most favorite cupping handle was this handle right here. This handle would pretty evenly apply force throughout both your finger flexion and wrist flexion. One thing about Ermi's is that he does not have as big of a frame as a normal super heavyweight. Ermi's is only 6 foot 2, which is not very tall for someone trying to go up against the likes of Alex Kurdecha. Because of Ermi's shorter arm length, he is going to be forced to contain his opponents with his wrist flexion before driving sideways toward the pin pad. Doing this will give him access to his power. But this is no easy task, which is why Ermi's needed a really, really strong wrist. And in 2022, he got a chance to see whether or not all of his training had paid off. He got another shot to pull with Alex Kurdecha, but this time, things were different. Ermi's was in total control the entire pull. His wrist had clearly become way, way stronger. Enough so that he could contain the literal Viking that is Alex Kurdecha without much of a problem. But that doesn't count, that's practice. It is true that this was in practice, but after this, Alex Kurdecha told Ermi's that he had surpassed him. He knew what he just felt, and what he just felt was pure, only quality power. After this, Ermi's goes on to prepare for his biggest test yet. He would face Dave Chafee at East vs. West. At this point in time, there was a lot of uncertainty as to where Ermi's level was at. He had moments that were very impressive, but he also had moments that did not look good for Ermi's lifelong dream of becoming the greatest arm wrestler in the world. But Ermi's was determined. Dave Chafee was globally recognized as the gatekeeper to the elite level. If you beat Dave, you get a shot at pretty much whoever you want. And not only that, but Dave Chafee had defeated Alex Kurdecha, who Ermi's had previously lost to. Ermi's needed this win. 
The first ready go happens, and Ermis takes control of this match. All of the nerves built up over months of prep suddenly vanish the moment Ermis realizes his dominance in the matchup. Ermis goes on to win this match 3-0, proving that he is one of the very best arm wrestlers on the planet. And he didn't just prove this to everyone else, but he proved it to himself, and that is often the very most difficult part. And shortly after this, Ermis dreams come true. He is offered a match against the number one arm wrestler in the world, Levon Saganishvili. During his prep for this match, Ermis continues blasting only quality pasta like he was previously, but he also does something else. Ermis breaks the world record in the back pressure lift. He lifts over 200 pounds with only his right arm. No one had ever lifted this kind of weight from this angle. Ermis was giving himself the very best chance he could possibly have to defeat Levon. But there was still a problem. Ermis had a stylistic weakness against Levon in that Levon is a longer arm top roller. There was a big question as to whether or not Ermi's wrist was strong enough to hold up in this match, but Ermi's had already done everything he could do. Now was the moment of truth. The first ready go happens, and Ermi's wrist holds, but this is only the first test. Now we go to straps. Once again, Ermi's bicep is strong, but he will need to keep his wrist if he wants to have a chance of winning this match. The ready go inside of straps happens, and Ermi's worst nightmare comes to life. Levon cracks his wrist back like butter. Ermi's holds him off for a second, but Levon readjusts and pins him easily. This is not looking good for Ermis. The second go happens, and this time, it's even worse. Levon takes full control, stares right into Ermis' soul, and slams him to the pad like a child. At this point, the match is all but over. Ermis wrist just wasn't strong enough. Round three starts, Levon takes full hand control again, and then it happens. Ermis forgets about his wrist, brings his shoulder forward, and goes into full break arm position like an absolute beast. And he begins to open the bicep angle of the unbeatable Levon Saganishvili. Unbeatable until now. A foul occurs, the match restarts, and everyone is losing their minds. The restart happens, and once again, Ermis stops Levon. But Levon elbow fouls, and the match is stopped. At this moment, it was starting to look like a new champion would be born. But in the final restart, Levon flash pins Ermis, making the score 3-0. The fourth round starts, and Levon flash pins him. Levon wins this super match and maintains his number one rank. A lot of people thought that Ermis could have won this match if running fouls were used, and that may be the case. But even though Ermis did not win this match, he proved to everyone that he deserved to be there. He proved that he is strong enough to beat anyone in the world by being the very first person in years to have a legitimate war with Levon Saganishvili. Ermis may not have won on that day, but he is only continuing to get bigger and bigger. And of course, he is accomplishing this in the best way possible, the only quality way. It won't be easy for him, and it won't happen overnight, but I think it is likely only a matter of time before Ermis Gasparini is the number one arm wrestler in the world.